Hi, my name is Ben Plesier and I am a fervent user of Wappler. With this video I will show you how to sort items using version 5 of Wappler. I have kept this demonstration down to a minimum so that I can show you the process that is required. Needless to say that this process can be expanded to other areas such as sorting images. As usual I start with the database. Here we see that the connection to the database has already been made and the table has already been created. I have created three fields within the table. These fields hold the values of the record ID, the name of the item and the index number of the item respectively. I have also gone ahead and populated a few records with the name of the item. In this case I have imitated the names on a navigation bar, hence the name of the table. The item index has been left blank. With the database ready to work with, I head off to the workflows section. Here I create a new folder named, Navigation. Within the folder I add our first API action. This is the read function so that I can populate the sort page with the data. For the read function action, I choose, Database and Database Query. In the Query Builder, I choose all three of the fields. The items will be sorted on their index number. And that is it for the moment, as far as the back end is concerned. I will be returning here once the sorting is done on the front end. Don't forget to save the file. Next, I go to the site manager. Here we see a typical Node.js project with a layout page, and a content page. Don't worry if you are using another server model, the same technique will be used. Although I am using the index page for our project, normally you would put the sorting module in a password protected page, where only site administrators can sort the items. This page will show the items that I previously entered into the database. To show those items here, I have to connect to the read function on the server. This is done by going to, data and server connect. I give the server connect a recognizable ID. For the action, I choose the navigation read function. The time has come to prepare the page for the contents by inserting the usual bootstrap structure. Starting with a container, a row, and a column. Inside the column, I place a heading, and reword it. Make sure there is a decent gap between this row and the next row. Inside the second row goes a column and a heading. This heading is also reworded. Time out. A word about headings. 1. Heading information can be used by user agents to construct a table of contents for a document. 2. Do not use heading elements to resize text. Instead, use a bootstrap class or other CSS font size property. 3. Do not skip heading levels, always start from H1 followed by H2 and so on. 4. Avoid using multiple H1 elements on one page. Using these principles. I change the heading type to an H2. I then resize the heading using the bootstrap H6 class. After the heading, I insert a form. I could have used the form in the dropdown. In this case I have gone to more. In the pop-up I choose, forms and form. I give the form a recognizable ID. Inside the form, I add a form repeat. And also give it a recognizable ID. For the repeat items, I choose the query from the server connect.
I want the items to be sortable, hence a tick in the checkbox. With the sortable checkbox ticked, Wappler offers two more settings. The first setting asks for the CSS selector of the handle that we will use to sort the items. I will give it a class of, handle. Note the period preceding the class name. This is to show that it is a class name. If I had chosen to use an ID, the name would have been preceded by a hash, also called a pound sign or, more correctly, an octothorpe. Then there is the animation. You may want to play around with this. In this case I have given it a value of 500. Inside the form repeat, I add a flex container. I could have gone for a row and columns or even a table with rows and columns. But I found that the flex container was the simplest way to achieve my goal. Inside the flex container, I add a button. Give the button an ID. Yes, a recognizable one. This button is going to be used as the handle for sorting. Therefore I give it the class that I determined in a previous step. I add the class of, handle. For the button, I will exchange the text for an icon. I do this by selecting the text and choosing the font awesome sign. I search for, bars and choose the relevant icon. To make the handle more prominent, I choose to resize it to large. After the button, I add a paragraph. With the paragraph selected, I scroll down to dynamic attributes and choose, display and inner text. For the value, I select, item inside the form repeat. A note about using a paragraph. The form that is being used, is in fact an update form where the index will be updated according to the index that is set here. If you wanted to change the name of the item as well, then the paragraph can be substituted with a text input field. This would also come in handy when adding an item. But that is a topic for another occasion. I just want to keep it simple for this video. Clicking on the refresh button, the menu items appear alongside their respective handles, although they do not share the same alignment. This is where the flex container comes in handy. All I need to do is to use the alignment property under flex flow. Refreshing the page shows the result. A form needs a submit button. To do this, I first select the form repeat and add a button after it. The button undergoes the normal treatment of text. ID Style Type Size I even give the button a top margin to further separate it from the rest of the form. An update form is not complete without input fields for the record ID and for the field that needs to be changed. I add two text input fields after the paragraph. The first text input is for the record ID. I adjust the ID and name to reflect the ID. I make this a hidden field and because of that, I have also removed the class. I then scroll down to dynamic attributes to select, input and value. For the value, I select item within the form repeat area.
The second text input is for the item underscore index. The text input undergoes the same treatment as the first text input. The value is form repeat index. Be careful not to choose item underscore index. And I am done with the front end. At least for the moment. I will return here after I finalize the back end. I return to the back end where I left off. Just the one API action. I now add a second API action called update. The inputs come from the posted form values. I select input. In the Properties panel I select the page that has the update form. Then I select the form. Notice the importance of a recognizable ID. Clicking the Import from Form button shows the input fields under Posted. Notice that the form repeat is actually an array. For the action, I choose database actions and database multi-update. The latter is to cater for the input array. The expression is the incoming array named, repeat navigation. Just the once is sufficient. In the database updater panel, I select the table. As you see, the values for the input fields are obtained from the repeat area, not directly from the posted values. In conditions tab, we see that the ID is also from the repeat area. Save the file and close it. We are done here. Back in the front end, I select the form. I convert it to a server connect form. The server action is the update action that I so just created. Then I scroll down to dynamic events. Select server connect and success. For the action, I choose to reload the data source to reflect the change. Save the file and test it in the browser. And that is how easy it is to add a sort function to your application. Normally I would end the video here. But what the heck, let's go exploring together. Please disregard any unprofessionalism from here on. I am entering unknown territory. Fortunately I have you to hold on to. First I open the layout page in code view. There I see a link to the sortable widget. I'll copy the name and open my browser. I go searching for sortable JS.
The selected page has plenty of goodies that we can learn from. Let's go to the GitHub page and see what we can find there. Wow! This is even more exciting. Wait, I think I can create something useful with this. I'll go back to Wappler, to the content page. Here I add a variable. I give the variable an ID of sorted and set the value to 0. Then I select the button and scroll down to dynamic attributes. I choose to show the button only when the sorted variable is set to 1. We now need a trigger to set the sorted variable to 1. This is best done when the drag and drop comes to an end. This is a bit of functionality that Wappler does not possess. Hand code. Brings back memories. Within the form repeat element, I add a DMX on end event. This option was gleaned from the GitHub page. For the action, I set the sorted variable to 1. In a roundabout way. Testing the page in a browser shows success. Now to hide the button once the items have been updated. Back in the page, I select the button and in dynamic events, I add a mouse on click event. The action is to set the sorted variable back to zero. In the browser, we see that all is well. How good is Wappler? Please leave your comments below. I also love seeing thumbs up and people subscribing to the channel. Thank you for watching.